Okay, so how good are we at doing this? Better. I mean, no one would say great, but better. So since 2000, there's been a really big push of at least the rocket bodies having a way of successfully re-entering and burning up. So they started to do this yes, actively in the 2000s. Now, rockets D did re-enter uh, previously. But nowadays, there's been an effort that even if you put up the satellite, you have to have a way of that rocket booster coming up and coming back down. So hopefully, it doesn't end up as another piece of junk. So the light blue ones are the ones where they made no effort to do this. So even though they started in 2000, there was still most of it didn't try. But you know, we're getting to nowadays where it's only about 20% are not trying at least to successfully re-enter and burn up. And we're actually getting very good of it. Nowadays, about at least 60% of rocket launches, the booster itself at least, does not end up as a piece of junk. It either lands down to be reused. This is what SpaceX does. Um, uh, other companies are reusing their rocket boosters by landing them safely in the ocean and going to pick it up. Or they, that they safely re-enter and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. So there is an effort being made to make this better. And there is success in making it better, because the one thing I think that unites the space junk problem is it kind of affects everyone equally, right? Yes, it's a classic uh, problem that uh, Russian space junk doesn't just destroy Russian spacecraft, American space junk doesn't just destroy theirs. It's a problem for everybody. And even one country or organization that's not taking care about this could make space uninhabitable for everybody else. Exactly. So there's, there's this kind of almost this now societal or cultural checks and balances saying eh, in a big push. And a lot of this, as we talk about in the, in the law part, is pushed to the UN of trying to implement procedures and policies of how anything is put up in space. And then also what it means for it to be brought down, that you have to have a plan. And yes, maybe that plan doesn't always work, but you need to have a plan to be approved for launch and that there has to be some idea of how you're going to limit and hopefully not produce more junk. And of course, this is not free. That's you right. have to store some fuel uh, that you could have used to put a bigger payload into a higher orbit. That's right. And instead save that fuel to help deorbit the things. So, so yeah, exactly. So it means it's you're going to be launching less, at more expense. Um, for the benefit of future generations. Exactly. So it, it means that it's now pushing people to find ways of making the entire thing as efficient or reusable as possible so you can save money. And this actually ends up being the bottom line. Everyone wants to access it and no one wants to spend or limit how much money they're paying. So the more you make it reusable or cyclable or safe or efficient, the better everyone is. And so it's this natural push towards um, space sustainability.